Good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, CS103. This is Linear Algebra for Computing Applications. Today is going to be an introduction. Then we will move on to Linear Algebra and we'll try to answer a bunch of questions. Why learn Linear Algebra for Computer Science? Secondly, what is it anyway? So Linear Algebra has this word linear in it. So we have to kind of answer the question what linearity is and also what is it applied to? What kind of mathematical object can be linear or non-linear? That will lead us to uh, concepts of expressions and functions and variables, transformations and mappings and stuff like that. Then we will take a kind of a philosophical look on what equality means and what equations are, especially in our context of this course. The whole idea of linearity and the conditions of linearity and what it applies to will lead kind of naturally to the concept of vectors and matrices. So that's where I want to kind of bring you to today. So this is the, the course. I have divided the textbook and the course in four parts. The first three lessons will be is what I call numeric computations then we will move on to algebraic view. So in the first week today, we will just understand what linearity means essentially and how that leads to the concepts of vectors and matrices. Next week, we will go into vectors and matrices in, uh, in more detail and their operations. The week after that, third week, we will look at uh, transposes and determinants of matrices. So that will kind of complete the basic understanding of the, the numerical techniques that you might need. And after that, we will move on to the algebra of linear algebra, the algebraic part. What I mean by that is uh, solving equation. As you will see later today, a matrix basically represents a set of equations and how to solve them, when you can solve them, and how you can determine the solvability conditions, etc. That will be the part of our fourth and fifth weeks. And after that, uh, part three, we're going to go into a sophisticated understanding of uh, spaces and what the spaces are and and what it means to say that uh, something is orthogonal etc the ninth week we will be dealing with something called the fundamental spaces of matrices the projection operation is an interesting operation a projection into a space is actually something like minimization in calculus and that also happens to be linear regression which is a machine learning technique which is quite impressive because without doing any kind of calculus kind of minimization you can actually come up with a minimization which is used in linear regression best fit line to a set of points that is a good example right finding a best fit line that is linear regression in uh, two dimensions and if you have three dimensional points and if you are trying to find the best plane that fits the three dimensional points that would be linear regression too so obviously you can see that there is some kind of minimization of the errors of something you might think that that will come from uh, calculus but no it actually comes from linear algebra in a very beautiful and elegant way part four uh, advanced topics more than that these topics are actually very important in machine learning eigenvalue decomposition eigenvalue computation will actually turn out to be the computation that uh, Mr. Larry Page did in coming up with uh, Google algorithm, the page rank algorithm long, long time ago, which was a billion dollar idea that is just an eigenvalued computation, nothing more than that. Then singular value decomposition is like eigenvalue decomposition. I know that these things might sound very esoteric and, uh, and confusing at this point, but when you come to it, you will see that uh, those things are extremely useful. SVD, singular value decomposition is the, is the first thing that you do in uh, machine learning when you have data what what's data data is a huge matrix you want to understand certain directions in the in the space that uh, is defined by that huge matrix which are important to you the principal the important components of the data in a very easy natural way that will come from svd and that can be used in reducing the dimensionality of the data so it's all extremely practical things in your life if you stay with computer science and data science linear algebra really is the theoretical or mathematical minimum that you need to be a good computer scientist so if you are Ask why do you want to learn words and uh, grammar and uh, sentences and uh, punctuation and stuff like that? What's the reason for learning it? If you want to be a write, writer, why not just write rather than learn these things? Without knowing words and, uh, and sentences and punctuation and stuff, you cannot be a good writer. Similarly, you cannot be a good computer scientist without having the theoretical minimum. If you look at uh, data sets, data sets are basically huge matrices. It is not humanly possible for you to look at the numbers and come up with anything sensible out of the data. You'll be writing machine learning program that makes sense out of the data and that will use linear algebra for instance if you look at the formulation of neural networks it looks like a linear algebra kind of formulation neural network is actually a non-linear mapping of one input vector to another vector but not linear and uh, that can be expressed in terms of uh, uh, the jargon and the 
and the machinery of linear algebra. Linear regression, as I mentioned earlier, is a straightforward and a beautiful, very elegant application of linear algebra. Statistical ideas like a covariance matrix will turn out to be just a matrix product after doing some uh, initial operations on the matrix. So statistics, some part of statistics can come out of a linear algebra. Linear regression, which is like a minimization problem, calculus can also come out of a linear algebra, both in a very elegant and very computationally efficient way. Google PageRank algorithm is basically an eigenvector computation. If you think of the whole network of uh, websites as, uh, as a connected graph, try to find the dominant eigenvalue and eigenvector, the corresponding eigenvector, that is basically what Google PageRank algorithm is. Beautiful and a very lucrative uh, idea. But that is all in computer science or our neck of the woods, but it actually goes beyond that. If you look at uh, quantum mechanics, the mathematical foundation of quantum mechanics is actually linear algebra. It's just that the vectors in quantum mechanics are not vectors, column vectors, uh, as you see in uh, in our context, but they are just functions. And uh, dot product is just an integral. And the space where these vectors live uh, is actually called a Hilbert space, is a complex space. But with that kind of uh, qualifications, the rest of it is basically just linear algebra. If you go and take a look at the the mathematics of quantum mechanics, it's identical. There's nothing more to it than that. If you look at uh, Einstein's uh, theory of relativity. The formulation of that also is basically just linear algebra. You will see later on in this course that we will talk about rotation matrices in three dimensions. Special relativity is basically a rotation in four dimensions. The spatial dimensions x, y, z and time. It becomes not the normal Euclidean space that you deal with but it is called a Minkowski space. It's a different kind of space but the mathematics is the same. Nothing complicated there. The physical interpretations might be complicated. The intuitions might be, might be difficult to follow but the mathematics is actually quite simple but it is also applied in electrical engineering if Kirchhoff's laws, which is about this, the conservation of current coming into a node, and, and Fourier and Laplace transformations, which is slightly more advanced uh, electrical engineering, electronics engineering, engineering, filter design, etc., that some of you might have done. If those are Fourier transformation is basically just a basis transformation. It's a transformation from one basis called the time domain to a different basis, which is called the frequency domain. Fast Fourier transformation is another implementation of Fourier transformation, which is uh, all basically just linear algebra and also fairly simple linear algebra like that. Apparently, Mechanical engineering also uses it. Control systems theory also does. And I expect these things also use these uh, concepts of linear algebra in a fairly simple way. I think it's computer science that uses the advanced topics in uh, linear algebra. So I spoke so much about linear algebra and its applicability. I hope uh, I motivated and inspired you to uh, be extremely excited about this course. Let's uh, take a step back and ask the question, what's this linearity that appears in the name linear algebra? Before we can answer that in a sensible fashion, we have to take one more step back and talk about variables, expressions, and equations, functions. Let me ask you this. What's a variable in the context of algebra? A placeholder for a value. Good, good answers. It's like a container for an unknown value. What's an expression in, in the context of linear algebra? A combination of mathematical entities, but since we called mathematical entities variables as placeholders, yeah, combination of variables, but combining using what? Mathematical operations. So that's what it is. So if I take a variable x, x squared is an expression, x itself is an expression, or a function like sine of x, even though we haven't defined what a function is, that would be an expression, x squared, e to the power x, ln of x, a quadratic a x squared plus bx plus c. All those things are expressions. And if you want to think of more complicated variables, like a vector, okay, a couple of words about my notation. When I use uh, normal letters in italics, those stand for scalar values, like values, real numbers. When I use bold letters, the same symbol X stands for a vector. A capital bold symbol stands for a matrix. So a matrix times a vector also is an expression. Here we are thinking of the the vector x as a, as a variable. It's a container for a mathematical entity, which is not a simple number, but it's something more complicated. So is A. A contains a, a matrix inside. So when you assign a name to an expression, you, when you call it by something, then that is what we mean by a function, but with one extra condition. So let's not worry about the condition yet. But let's think about the assignment first. If I say f stands for some expression ax, where a is just a number, like let's say 5x, x is a variable, then that is a function in x. So that's what a function is. So ln of x or e to the power x, all those things are functions with one proviso that it should be single value. So if I say f of x 
is uh, the absolute value of square root of uh, x so let me not call it square root of x but let me call it x to the power half okay is that a function by our definition is this an expression the absolute value of uh, x to the power half is an expression because it's got x in it and it's some mathematical operation that you're doing on it specified by that the symbols there so it is an expression if i call it by a name f is it a function by which what i mean is is it single valued if it is single valued and if it is an expression then it's a function okay now if i say f of x is equal to x to the power half without the absolute value do you think this is a function it's no but why not what's wrong with this not single value obviously so that's all i wanted to kind of drive home now we will use the notation r to stand for the set of all possible real numbers r for real it's got this funny double two-faced uh, uh, notation if i define a function i might say that it's a function that takes a value in r and maps it to another value in r so f r to r similar to a computer language assignment in which in python or something when you say x is equal to 5 you have a memory location with a label x somewhere and you're putting in the value 5 in that container in that memory location and if you take an expression and call it by a name again it's an assignment kind of operation i'm not saying anything about about the truthfulness or the veracity of uh, that statement i'm just using the name f to stand for an expression equation is a is a different kind of beast when i say an expression is equal to another expression or a constant then what i'm saying as an equation is something more i'm saying that that is a statement of truth i'm requiring that to be true so for instance if i say ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero by the way that is our preferred uh, form of an equation we'll have expression on the left hand side and uh, constant on the right hand side that's the way we like to write uh, equations so here what i mean by this is i'm stating that this is true and i'm looking for for instance the values of x that satisfy this statement of truth similarly if i say something like minus mx plus y equal to c which is the same as y is equal to mx plus c i'm looking for all the y's and all the x's that satisfy this condition okay that is an equation i'm not taking this container here i'm putting in a value c in it five or whatever number so that's not what's happening i'm requiring that statement to be true or looking for the values that will make the statement true but that will be the solution of uh, that equation by the way the solution of this equation will be a line every point in that line will have x and y values that satisfy this equation so equal sign can mean two different things in uh, one context it might be like an assignment as you see it in uh, programming languages but in another context it could be an equation the equality is actually a statement of truth with that we can go one step further and look at a function as though it's a transformation a function a simple function y equal to fx so it's a function that takes a value x from the set of real numbers and transforms it into another value in uh, real numbers which is y so you can actually think of this as as a black box an entity that takes a value and transforms it into y and gives it back to you input here output there a real number gets mapped to another real number so that's the way to look at it so it's a transformation it's a mapping it's a function in our context in linear algebra for us all these things are basically the same they are all synonym but for a mathematical course if this were a graduate level course in now linear algebra then that professor might want to make distinctions between these things so let me give you some examples of of uh, transformations y equal to this that's a transformation that's a line the so second one is a quadratic the third one is some other shape lawn sine is a is a waveform so those are all good examples then i have some counter examples again i mean x to the power half rather than square root of x because i was told yesterday that square root of x implies that is a positive square root of x so x to the power half doesn't have that implication so these are not functions because they are not single value the first two are obvious the third one y is equal to time actually it's a function in uh, in excel if you want to know the time this is the function that you use but i'm saying that it's not a function for us in a linear algebra what's wrong with that why is this not a function it's got two problems one problem is of course that it's multi-valued depending on the time it is now i get i get different values so that is obviously a problem this another problem there it doesn't take any input it doesn't you don't know what it is mapping so question do these two equations represent functions the first one is y is equal to x to the power minus half now is that a function does it represent a function it's not a function as it is written but does it represent does it come from a function y is equal to x to the power minus half why is this not a function it's the same objection as uh, what we had 
had it earlier x to the power half and x to the power minus half reciprocal of the other one so it's not single valued one is not single value so is the the other also is not single valued look at the second one there x to the power minus one third is that a function it is again an exponent that happens to be a function which is kind of interesting odd roots are functions but even roots are not functions. now with all that let's move on to linearity we already learned expressions functions and equations these things each one of those objects can be linear or non-linear expressions are just combinations of variables functions are named expressions equations are expression equal to constant so if the expression is a uh, linear then the function cor corresponding function which stands for its name is linear and the equation of which this expression is a part also is linear so there are two conditions to be satisfied i haven't specified them but i, I will very soon so if the expression is linear by these two conditions that i will specify then the function function in which it is the, the right hand side that is linear and the equation in which it is the left hand side that also is linear all right now let's define these two conditions the condition number one is called homogeneity that means if you scale the input variable by some number the output also should scale by the same number so if that happens in an expression then that expression is a linear if you call it by a function name f then that function also is linear so if i have f of x equal to some number 5x I want to see if it satisfies the first condition of homogeneity. What I will have to do is to scale s by some number. Let's try scaling it by a number 2. So I will say f of uh, 2x. What is that? That's going to be equal to 5 times 2x. That is just 2 times 5x, which of course is a uh, 2 times f of x. So f of some scalar times x is the same as s f of x. That implies it is uh, homogeneous h satisfied. If you take some other example where it is not satisfied, x square. We know that it's not linear because it's quadratic already. But let's see what happens if you take f of uh, 2x. That is a uh, 2x square, 4x square. 4 times f of x not 2 times f of x so h not satisfied now this has an implication i can scale by any number in particular i could take 0 so i could take f of uh, 0 times x which is just 0 and this has to be equal to 0 times f of x which is 0 so f of 0 has to be 0 for it to satisfy the first condition of uh, linearity so one easy way to test 0 for x if you don't get 0 then right away it is not linear but if, it, if you do get 0 it doesn't mean that it's linear you have to do further tests but if you don't you know right away that it's not for instance if you had the equation y is equal to mx plus c which i'm going to call that a function f of x equal to that is this linear f of zero is uh, m times zero which is zero plus c this is linear only if c is zero which is surprising you know that it's a line but it's not a linear expression in one variable let's move on to the second additivity condition if you have two inputs take the sum of the inputs and take the function of that that has to decompose to the sum of the functions so f of x plus x prime is equal to f of x plus f of x prime for these two values in uh, the set of real numbers okay so that's the additivity condition so let's check if uh, f of x equal to 5x is this uh, linear by the second condition or does it satisfy the second condition of linearity let's take f of 1 plus 2 that is going to be equal to 5 times 1 plus 2 which is going to be equal to 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2 which is f of 1 plus f of 2 maybe it's easier to show with symbols rather than numbers let me do this once more using f of x plus x prime is going to be equal to 5 times x plus x prime which is 5x plus 5 x prime which is equal to f of x f of x prime so additivity condition satisfied let's look at uh, the test that you can apply to see if something is linear so, as we just did so test you scale the input by a factor and the output should scale by the same factor sum the inputs if you have two inputs uh, take the sum of it and take the output for the sum should be equal to the sum of the individual outputs so the implications are interesting zero should always transform to zero i'm talking about real numbers here but even when you move on to complex objects like vectors a zero vector should transform to a zero vector that is important another thing is a negative input should change the negative uh, output so if you take f of x and take f of uh, minus x that should be minus fx because you're just multiplying by minus one so that's again easy to test the scaling of the input sum of the inputs those things are basically conditions that those are the things that you can do also so this is the order in which you might want to apply the test the first thing is very easy put zero and see if you get zero if you don't get zero you can stop right there 
if you do get zero it doesn't mean that you you should be happy you might get hit by one of the other conditions let me show you an example of where the first consequence or implication is satisfied zero transformed to zero but it's still not linear okay i have a vector three and four so a vector going this way this is my vector okay so vector always our vectors always start from the origin and go to some point in the co the coordinate space this point is actually three four so this vector is actually three four what's the length of this vector so the length is uh, five you know that from uh, the old right angle triangle so let me call this guy x vector x and this length i'm going to use this notation which is called the norm or the size of the vector that is five now suppose i make the vector zero or multiply the vector by zero or take the zero vector another vector which is a zero vector here zero zero its length is going to be zero so this is uh, my x prime this is my so it looks like the first first uh, implication is satisfied but is it linear though this is function which is a function from a vector to a real number which is a norm okay is this function linear do you think it is linear it's not linear because if you take the negative of it which will be multiply the vector by minus one so you'll get minus three minus four here the length of this guy x double prime let's say is still five it's not minus five it is still five so you flip the vector it doesn't change sign so this function f of x vector is equal to the norm of the vector this is not linear okay even though it might look like it is it scales properly it doesn't scale when you take the negative of it so you might get hit by things that you may not see immediately it just means that if you flip the sign of the input the output also should flip the sign first one is that linear actually we answered that already it is not linear unless c is equal to zero for any constant other than zero this is not linear the, a line a line is not linear which is a weird thing to say unless the constant is zero unless it goes through the origin going through the origin is important things have to go through the origin for to be linear the second one is the is a norm of a vector that we just did that is not linear because if you take the negative of the vector the norm is always positive fx equal to 5 is that linear not linear because it's basically the same as mx plus c with c equal to 5 and m equal to 0 so it's not linear fx equal to a quadratic obviously not linear because it's quadratic fx equal to 0 is that linear how do you know whether it's linear or not we just have to go through the steps here i just have to apply the two conditions x equal to 0 so f of 0 is a uh, 0 that is is good f of uh, if i take f of uh, x plus x prime which is the additivity condition so this is going to give me zero because whatever is inside i'm going to get zero i know that and this is also equal to f of x plus f of x prime because this is zero and this is also is zero so this is satisfied this is satisfied this is fine this is fine everything is fine so this is actually linear x plus three is uh, not linear because it's uh, mx plus c with c equal to three m equal to one the last one fx equal to x plus three x is that linear yeah because it is just four x so what's wrong with uh, y is equal to mx plus c so fx which is a placeholder for the expression mx plus c is not linear because f of zero is not zero and if you double it obviously you get something not twice of x so it's not homogeneous so right right away it's not linear but we know that is the line what's the contradiction here what's the equation to a line that basically is y is equal to mx plus c change it to our preferred form which is which is expression equal to constant we will write it th this way minus mx plus y equal to c it's the same equation it's just written differently now look at the left hand side of that it's not a function of one variable it's not an expression in one variable it's actually an ex expression in two variables x and y now the question is is it linear as an expression in two variables but what we defined as the conditions for linearity were only for functions or expressions in one variable so let's extend it by saying this let's say that uh, if i scale both x and y by the same factor by the same scalar then the output should scale by the same factor let me redefine that as the homogeneity for multiple variables so here i'm using only two variables x and y but it could be any number of variables x y z x1 x2 x3 up to x and any number of variables i define it this way if i scale all of them by the same factor then the output should scale by the same factor of course this generalization because it does work for uh, just one variable too additivity also let's define it in such a way that if you add the corresponding elements f of x plus x prime and uh, y plus y prime is equal to f of x y plus f of x prime y prime of course if i had more than two x y z or x1 x2 x3 up to xn i could just extend it 
So again, this is a generalization of single variable case. So again, this, these are definitions. I'm actually defining the conditions for linearity this way. Then let's see if f of x, y, which is mx plus uh, y, is that linear. So now scale x and y by the same factor, and then look at uh, what uh, minus mx plus y gives you. Then you can actually see that the factor s gets pulled out. Then it does look linear as a function of two variables. As a, an expression in one variable, mx plus c is not linear, but as a function of two variables, the expression minus mx plus y, it is linear by our extended or generalized version of linearity. We are kind of generalizing the notion of linearity so that it applies to multiple variables. Let's move on to the additivity condition. So this was our additivity condition. We have the summation of x and x prime, y and y prime at the same time, and then you can decompose it. You do a little bit of a kindergarten algebra, and then you get f of x plus x prime, y plus y prime is equal to f of x y plus f of x prime y prime. You get that. So additivity condition also is satisfied. Our generalized version of linearity conditions are satisfied by this minus mx plus y. So it is actually a linear expression in two variables, not as one variable. Okay, so by the generalized definition of linearity, the generalized conditions of linearity, I should say, f of x y equal to minus mx plus y is a linear function of two variables. To reiterate it, fx as a function of just one variable, mx plus c is not linear. Actually, let's ask the question differently. We know that it would be linear only if c is equal to zero. So the only form in which a function of uh, one variable can be linear is if it is in the form mx, fx equal to mx. So instead of m, let me use the letter a. fx equal to ax is uh, linear. a and uh, x being uh, members of uh, the set of linear, a uh, set of uh, real numbers. So the only linear equation equation remember is expression equal to constant so the only linear equation in one variable is a very simple one ax equal to b it's more subtle than it looks right if you write the equations in our form that is expression equal to constant then you just have to worry about the mm, the expression part if you actually spread it out uh, like expression equal to expression then that is more complicated then you will have to worry about how to make it into the form expression equal to constant so our equations will always be actually a linear expression equal to a constant and we will not worry about non-linear non equations all right so so let's just generalize linearity f of x y we define linearity using uh, scaling means scale both x and y at the same time adding means if you have multiple pairs of x and x's and y's then you add them at corresponding elements okay so if i have two numbers when i want to scale i want to scale both of them at the same time by the same factor if i want to add two sets of numbers like that i want to add the corresponding elements the x's and the y's that's what i want to do so as an ordered list so it gives you the notion of an ordering of the list so that's what i want to do that actually leads to the notion of a vector vector the vector x x in bold letters is a vector okay that is an ordered pair of numbers x and y when i scale it i'm going to scale both of them if i scale it by a scalar s i'm going to scale both of them at the same time by the same factor if i add two vectors like that this is a vector this is another vector if i add two vectors like that i'm going to add the corresponding elements so i'm defining an entity called vector and scaling and addition the operations on this vector like this so that i can use them as a part of my expressions that will have a chance of being linear with that definition i can actually reuse my original definition of uh, homogeneity and additivity by saying that my input now is a vector called x but a bold x say that this is a vector so homogeneity is for a function of an entity called x which is a vector if i scale the vector by a factor the function the output of the function should scale by the same factor that is homogeneity just as it was for real numbers except that instead of real numbers i have a bunch of real numbers arranged in a column now which is a vector additivity also the same thing instead of adding two real numbers i'm adding two vectors now and they should add as i defined here the corresponding elements and now my notation for the real numbers i had x as a member of r the set of uh, numbers now i'm going to say the vector x is a member of r n there are n numbers so that is a is a member of r n this is to say that x is a vector of n elements and each element is actually a real number in our definition for now we used only two components x and y but it can be any number so let's just do one more thing before kind of, we kind of wrap it up we want to write this equation minus mx plus y equal to c in in the language of linear algebra of vectors and matrices we know what a vector is by now it's an ordered pair of numbers so let's define one more operation so we had a vector which is a x and y written this way this is the only way we'll write vectors always it's a, it's a column we we'll always try to write vectors this way and now suppose i have a couple of elements m and one minus m and 
one written as a in a row and call that a matrix suppose i define an operation between these two this matrix and this vector such that it is this minus m1 as a matrix multiplying the vector x y gives you minus mx plus y is again a matrix but matrix with just one number which is the same as a number or if i want if i don't like the minus sign and the one here i might call it a1 and a2 in a in a row of x y so i'll define i'm defining an operation here i'm defining a multiplication between these two entities the first entity i'm going to call that a matrix very soon the second entity is a vector which is also a column it's a matrix of one column so i can write an equation kind of like that and if i have more equations not just one equation but so let's say i have three equations a11 a12 a21 a22 a31 a32 those are my coefficients i can write them as a multiplication of a, a bigger matrix by the same two variables by defi defining the matrix multiplication this way again don't worry too much about this matrix multiplication yet because we'll go through it in many different uh, ways next week this week i just want to introduce you to the notion that there is an entity called a matrix which comes from our desire to be able to write equations in a compact fashion if i call this table of six numbers here a matrix and use a symbol for it let's say a and i can write this in a very compact fashion if i call the matrix originally here minus m1 a and my vector x y with two components the bold letter x then i can write this equation as a x equal to c a is a matrix s is a vector and equal to c c is a constant and if i had three equations coming from here from the second part of my uh, first column a11 x plus a12 y is equal to b1 and so on for b2 and b3 i could again write it in a compact fashion a times x equal to b so x is a vector of two components x and y and b is a vector of three components here b1 b2 b3 so that stands for this set of equations not just one equation but a system of three linear equations and here my matrix has uh, three rows and two columns and i'll indicate that by saying a is a member of r three by two three rows and two columns x is a member of r2 is a vector r2 is a collection of all possible vectors of uh, two elements and b is a member of r3 and r3 is a collection of all possible vectors of three elements so now as you can see the matrix a is actually a transformation it takes a vector of size 2 and uh, gives you a vector of size 3 so it's a transformation from r2 to r3 later on we'll call r2 a space r3 a space so it's a transformation from one space to another it's actually a matrix operation multiplication is a matrix multiplication but by the end of next week you will realize that our vectors are columns of numbers those are all actually just matrices of one column so the distinction between a matrix and a vector kind of uh, diminishes by the end of next week matrix multiplication will also apply to a, a vector multiplication why did i write uh, things like r2 and r3 it's not r to the power 2 it's r2 this just stands for the set of all possible vectors of two elements this just stands for the set of all possible vectors of three elements that's just the nomenclature that's just the definition it's not r to the power three it's not a power and similarly r three by two is a collection of all possible the set of all possible matrices of size three by two three rows and two columns so let me just kind of recap for our purpose a vector is an ordered set of numbers it's a column of numbers a matrix is a table of numbers and the numbers within the table can be integer rational real complex etc in our case we are always interested in real numbers but it could be instead of r you could have a c for complex numbers or you could have a z for uh, integers and q for uh, rational etc those are all different different sets of numbers okay so these are different sets real numbers rational numbers integers and complex numbers okay so in sage math since these guys are actually double letters sage math will call complex numbers the set of complex numbers or a field of complex numbers cc field of real numbers rr field of rationals qq field of integers zz this distinction is not such a big deal really because as you know integers are a subset of rationals which are a, which are a subset of real numbers which are a subset of uh, complex numbers it's just that we will always deal with uh, not always but mostly 99 percent of the time we will be dealing with real numbers so in a matrix or in a vector the numbers will have to be of the same type meaning if you have uh, a real number and an integer somewhere the integer will be kind of promoted internally in, in stage math as a real number and if you have a complex number anywhere all elements are 
tensor complex. So I'm giving you a vector here. So vector here. These are three measurements, so three numbers pertaining to me, myself. This is a vector, three numbers there. What are those three numbers? So any guesses? Yeah, it is actually right there. This is my weight, height, and age. Here's a matrix. In kind of fancier language, we will call our matrices over the field of real numbers. So vectors are over the field of real numbers, etc. So this is over the field of uh, real numbers. So it's a member of R3. This is a, a matrix which is a member of R4 by 3. Remember, always rows first, columns second. In general, when you generalize it, which is the way we want to do later on, X will be a member of Rn. Our matrices are going to be members of uh, uh, Rm by n, n rows and n columns. And when I write an equation ax equal to b, remember x is a collection of uh, uh, n numbers and unknowns, okay? And uh, a has each row in a actually translates into an equation by that matrix equation. So I have m equations and n unknowns. So a is equal to b, that's a notation for a system of linear equations, m linear equation, n unknowns. So a is a, is a member of r m by n, x is a member of r n, b is a member of Rn. So A is a mapping from Rn to Rm. So it represents a system of linear equations. From now on, we'll be seeing this Ax equal to B over and over again, and we'll be actually dealing with the properties of the linear equations that it uh, represents, its solution solvability, and what the matrix says about uh, <laughs> that, etc, etc. So we'll basically live and die by uh, this point. equation. All right, so that will be the rest of the course. And as you can see, it represents a linear transformation. Later on, much later, we will call Rn a space. It's a collection of uh, vectors of size n. And we'll call it a space, a vector space of uh, n-dimensional vectors. So A is a mapping from one space to another. We'll don't worry about it for now, but I'm just giving you a preview. Now, originally I wrote the equation, a linear equation in, uh, what should I call it, a lowly single variable x as ax equal to b because I wanted to get to the same form and the same way of saying when we actually reach a multi-dimensional, multi-variable kind of situation. This is what's ha going to happen in uh, data science. We'll have a huge matrix, say a million rows and uh, say a thousand columns, which is not an unusual. Though that's actually a system of linear equations, a million equations of a thousand unknowns but that has this uh, origin in this simple linear equation of ax equal to b but we are able to even in the first class extend it all the way to any number of uh, uh, variables and any number of uh, equations all right so this is what we learned we define linearity as uh, two conditions we started with uh, just real numbers and then we extended that to uh, multi-variable situations we started with real numbers as in uh, we started with single variable and we, then we extended to multiple variables that led to the notion of uh, vectors because vectors are entities that scale together if you scale a vector each element of the vector scales because that is a that we defined it that way because we wanted to define linearity conditions in terms of a vector then we also came up with the notion of matrix so that we could write multiple equations multiple linear equations in a in a simple fashion so the notation became uh, very elegant so a large number of uh, equations will uh, will become just a simple three letter equation like that but hiding behind it is could be a million equations so each data set is actually holding millions of equations of this kind especially in uh, our age of uh, big data and uh, we have two conditions homogeneity basically means scale the input the output should scale by the same number then additivity you take the transformation of uh, a sum it should be the sum of transformation so homogeneity is uh, take the transformation of a scaled entity should be the scale transformation of the entity additivity is a uh, uh, transformation of a sum should be sum of transformations and that led to the homogeneity in the operation of uh, vectors that as in a scale all elements additivity at the corresponding elements which all worked out very nicely then we we came up with this notion of matrix multiplication another operation not necessarily because of linearity but so that we could write multiple equations in this uh, elegant fashion so that's what we did 